We've looked at common problems on trucks before. Today it's Ford's turn as we dissect issues in the engine and suspension and give you tips to solve these problems. Today on Truck U. Hey, canary yellow, man, your favorite color. That's my specialty. You'll be able to see me coming. Hey, welcome to Truck U. I'm Matt Steele. Hi, I'm Bruno Massel. Now, today, as you can see, we've got a couple Fords in the shop. We've got the F-250 Super Duty right here looking bright. You'll be able to see it from a mile away. And the old faithful right there, the F-150, the old work truck, if yeah. you will. So not too long ago, we had a show specifically devoted to small problems guys were having with Chevy trucks. And today, we're going to pick on Fords a little bit. No, we're not exactly pick on them. What we're trying to do is put together a list of some ideas of problems people are having with these trucks that's in common you know so if you're at home and you're having an issue with your truck this might be a good place to start or it might be some preventative stuff to keep you from having an issue at home right now the first one that we want to deal with is right here as we take a look at this little engine that we did a nice little cut job right there man that's yeah, good my little cutaway here it's a little bit crude it's not laser cut but it does the job what we're trying to show you is with a 4.6 liter uh, triton v8 head Problems going on with the with the cylinder head right here is where the spark plug hole is. What it is, there isn't a lot of threads there, and that can cause a real problem. Well, here's what happens: you get up to the high mileage zone, what we like to call it, you know, up between 70 and 100,000 miles, and you get some carbon buildup down here, and that actually leads to more pressure, higher compression. So there's more pressure on that plug, kind of kicking it back, and with the little amount of threads that you've got there that you were talking about and the higher pressure, bad things can happen. You talk about bad things happening, what can happen is the spark plug actually gets shot out the spark plug hole. I know it sounds extreme, but if you put your finger over the spark plug hole and you just spin the motor over by hand, you have someone crank it over, you can feel how much pressure is coming through the engine. Right. Well, magnify that up by a whole bunch when this thing's running or doing some heavy pulling, it'll really shoot that spark plug out with some force and that's not a good thing. Fortunately, it's a pretty easy thing to fix if you have the right kit and we've got one right here today. You can do it with the heads out like this or you can do it right on the engine as it sits. The first thing we need to do is get in there and bore out those old threads. Let me get some grease on here so we can hang on to some of that metal. There you go. That should do it. Yeah, this will keep the, the aluminum chips to cling to the tool itself and pull it out of the hole. It won't contaminate the hole we're making. So the idea here is to remove the existing threads with this counter bore. What it'll do is keep turning till it hits a spot where it'll spin freely. You know we've gone deep enough. Now, using the Grease on the, th on the tool itself is great because it'll pull some of the garbage out of there. Now keep in mind when you're doing this on the vehicle, you have to be really cautious because you can't have any of these metal chips getting into the engine for obvious reasons. So one thing you want to keep in mind is you want to make sure that if you've got the, the valve sitting right here next to the spark plug hole, this tool is going to protrude through the plug hole like that. The valves are open, you're going to hit the valves and you'll damage them. So make sure the cylinder you're working on, the valves stay closed. This way you won't damage the valves. Also, you want to keep the shop vac handy so if any little particles come off of your cutting tool, you can hit them with the shop vac and suck them back up. Because the last thing you want is aluminum chips inside your engine. So I'm going to keep going here until we get these all cleaned out. And then we'll go ahead and ream out the hole. So that'll get down to the bottom once those threads are gone. And as you can see, now it's spinning freely so he knows he's down as far as he needs to go. Nice and easy. All right, we'll get that out of there and change it. And we can take you to the next step, which is going to be that reamer. We can clean that hole out a little bit and make it a little bit bigger as right. well. So what we need to do is make the hole bigger with the reamer tool and actually put on the little uh, the, the counter or the little edge for it to seed into that some of the original machining had problems with didn't do in one of the factories. So what we can do is put this bigger insert in. To do so, we need a little bit bigger hole, and the reamer's a good way to do that. Once again, Matt's using some grease on to pull out some of the aluminum uh, the, the aluminum chips, so this will have a nice clean hole to work with. Keep it clean. There you go. Thanks, sir. I'll clean this off while you're doing that. How's it looking? It's coming. All right, now that you've got that all reamed out, I'll get this back to you, okay. and you can go ahead and tap that. And we'll get that ready for this insert. Now this insert's gonna go in 
right there. You can see that's the whole goal of what we're doing. Now we talked earlier about the lack of threads right there. It's not only the lack of threads that's the issue, it's the fact that it's in the aluminum right there too. So it's easy to strip out and it can easily become a problem. I know you've done that on the race car. We've been talking about yeah. it. Yeah, that's scary. And that's real bad. So what we're doing is we're putting this little steel piece right in there on the insert. So you see the amount of threads right here, it's gonna be a lot more. These threads will secure this in the aluminum and that'll hold on. So we're gonna get a lot stronger connection. You know, a little tip you guys at home, when you're tapping these holes, you might as well go a little bit at a time, pull it out, re wipe off your tool and re-grease it, go back in again. This way what happens is you're not gonna load, it won't load up on you, plus you'll also have a nice cleaner thread so you won't have an issue when you go to put the insert in. It's kinda cool watching it like this. Uh -huh. Yeah, you like watching. Not so much for the working though. Now we put on some Loctite here, and we're ready to insert the insert. Well, sort of. <laughs> Sorry about that. Use our tool here, and like that. Okay, that is down in there. Now we do is we can take this off and use a little Allen wrench because this tool holds it in place. We loosen it up so we can now get the tool out. The insert should stay in place and basically our hole is fixed. All we have to do after this is go ahead and chase the, the threads on the, inside, on the inside diameter to make sure that our spark plug won't get hung up getting it in. All right, the final step, a little cutting oil on that, on the thread chaser, and we'll be locked in. Yep, all we're trying to do is just clean out the threads here so our spark plug will go in nice and easy, it'll come out nice and easy, there'll be no burrs, and we will have no more cylinder head problems. All right, so the kit took care of this. That's one less thing we've got to worry about. We need to go to break right now. When we come back, we'll deal with some more issues that Ford owners deal with from time to time. Welcome back to Truck U. Another issue that Ford owners might be dealing with, especially if you've got an 05 or newer 4654 or 68, is the issue with the two-piece spark plug that the factory installed. Yeah, and a lot of people have had the same issue, and if you've got one of those engines, sooner than later you want to go ahead and take those spark plugs out, because the longer they're in your engine, the better chance you've got carbon buildup to lock it in place into an aluminum cylinder head. Everybody knows aluminum is going to uh, expand and contract when it goes through heat cycles, and with the carbon buildup on it, it'll really get wedged into place. So what you want to do is there's kind of a fix you can do if it's not too late is when you go to take the spark plug out, just crack it and break it loose about an eighth to a quarter of a turn. Take some carburetor cleaner, spray it down in through that spark plug hole, and what it'll do is you let it soak a little bit, hopefully it'll eat away some of that carbon. So this way, you're, when you try and take the spark plug out, the threads on the back side will be free, and it'll pull out in one piece. At that point, you might be a little too late, though. You right. might sp split in half. At that point, you've got one half in your hand and the other half still in the cylinder head. And that's a big problem right there. And that's the whole problem with the deal is because all you're trying to do is change your plugs. You're trying to do a good thing. And now you've got two options. You've got to take it over to the shop and have them do it. And that's going to be a costly repair. Or you've got to get the specialty tool and get in there and try to get that bottom half out so it hopefully doesn't fall into the combustion chamber. So either way, you've got a mess. Yeah, and you're going to be lucky to get that out and not create any other damage. So it can be a costly, it can be a costly thing. So get to it sooner than later is your best your best thing to do. The way to fix that is to go with a spark plug that's got a single body design just like this one right here. So as you can see where it screws in and where you put it in and out is all one piece so it's not going to break in half on you. That's the way to go. Now if you guys have been watching Truck U for a while, one, we appreciate it. Let's keep the ratings up, dude. All right, that's good. But you also know that we have a section called Ask the Host on our website. So today's question comes from Corey, and Corey says, I've got a 1994 F-250, and it's leaking antifreeze. We ran a pressure test on it, and it showed it had no leaks, but it's still leaking antifreeze. What in the world could be going on with this thing? Well, Corey, I'm assuming that, well, I have to go ahead and assume that you're doing the pressure test when the engine is cold, and it's not showing any leaks, it's not showing any drops. But if you're doing it when it's hot, you might see some drops, or some leaks that you wouldn't see when it's cold. What it is, like I said, aluminum expands. And what it's going to do is allow right here from the water jackets are so close to the cylinder or the uh, combustion chamber, it'll allow water to get past into that combustion chamber. So what's happening is that coolant's getting into your combustion chamber and getting sucked out through your exhaust and getting burned off initially. Now, you won't see any puddles on the ground because your engine's consuming it, but you will see a big loss in power. Now, the good news is if it's a small leak, like you 
said, there are products on the market like this that can fix that. You just dump it in and it fixes the head gasket. The bad news is it's going to get worse over time and once it does, you're going to have to replace the whole head gasket. But in the meantime, this is a much cheaper alternative. So Corey, thanks for writing. Say hey to the family. We appreciate it, man. Now, I know what you're thinking. What would a show about Fords be without the 1996 awesome Steel Ranger, right? This is one of my personal vehicles, and I love this truck. I've had it for, I don't know, 14, 15 years, bought this baby brand new. But one of the issues that some guys have with Fords is with the idler air control, also known as the IAC or the IAC. It's a little module that's right back here on the back side of the throttle body on this particular Ranger. Well, it's easy to take off. You just unplug it right there, and there's two little bolts. When you're taking this apart, be extra careful not to lose this gasket because we're going to use this. Now, conventional wisdom or some things that you might read tell you that this piece is not meant to be serviced. They'll say, just go ahead and put a new one on there. Well, that costs money. It's not an overwhelmingly expensive part, but if you can clean this out and still use it and save a couple bucks in the meantime, why not do that, right? Now, this is an automatic, or this is a stick shift, rather, so it's not that big of a deal. You know if this isn't working because the vehicle won't idle. You turn it up, the ignition process is going and all of a sudden you put the key back into the key on position and boom, without your foot on the gas, it just will not hold an idle. That's when you know this isn't working. Again, with the stick shift, it's not the end of the world. You can just pedal a little bit and you get down the road. If you have an automatic, I used to have a 2000 Ford Excursion. That was an automatic. That was a much bigger deal because I really couldn't use it if this wasn't working. Either way, you pop this off and you clean it off. There's a couple different schools of thought when it comes to cleaning this. Some guys will say, don't touch the spring in there. You can see the little spring in the plunger and that moves back and forth. They'll say, whatever you do, don't touch that. Look, the part's not working, so how much harm are you going to do, right? So I got in there with a little carbon buildup. Sometimes it'll hold things up and it'll kind of hold it in one spot, and that's why it's not working. So you want to get that cleaned out. But you can kind of move things loose a little bit, loosen it up with that. You don't want to break anything, so don't be too hard on it. Then you get in here with a little throttle body cleaner, and you spray it right into these two holes. That's where the issue is. You've got some carbon buildup in there. So you get in there, and you clean that out, and you kind of shake it around and it's cleaning and scrubbing and scrubbing and you want to get rid of that carbon. So we dump that out. You might have to do that a couple times. But that'll get in there and that'll clean it pretty easy. So some guys will tell you, well, let it sit and dry overnight. Sometimes you don't have that much time. So you just dry it off as best you can, shake it out. And another school of thought is to put a little lube in there and lube up that spring so it'll move nicely. Some guys don't want to do that because they don't want to get that in their ignition, but the thing is, it's flammable. That'll just burn right out. It's not going to be a problem. So now, you can see how fast this is. We've got it cleaned up, got it lubed. You could, if you have time, let it sit and dry overnight, or you can just pop it back on in this condition, and it's worked. I've been doing this for years with no problem at all. So this is good and clean. All I've got to do is put the gasket back on, bolt this baby in, plug it in, and I will not have any more idling problems. Welcome back to Truck U. Now, another issue that a lot of Super Duty owners will deal with is a death wobble type situation. Not too long ago, we did a whole show about death wobble on Jeeps. That was a big problem, and we got those fixed up. Now, here's usually the problem with the coil spring technology in the front as far as suspension goes. Generally, the issue is with worn out bushings right here on the track bar. But by the time you factor in a lift kit right. and bigger tires and all the other good stuff, you've got a lot of different things that can contribute to that. Yep, so our fix is in the form of WC Motorsports and Off-Road Super Shaker Eliminator Kit. Now the first thing we're going to do is eliminate the death wobble by replacing those uh, rubber bushings. What we're going to do is put heim joints on either end, that'll take care of that problem. Now we're going to go ahead and get rid of this ball joint with this new mounting bracket. So it'll either mount here or underneath here. And the whole idea is to take this new track bar and get it in the same line, the same angle as our drag link. By getting it in the same angle, what we'll do is get rid of bump steer as well, so it's kind of a two-in-one fix. Yeah, if you've got geometry going all different directions in your suspension, it can lead to those problems. And that, like you said, they've got a couple different kits. The one that we're going to use, because there's already a lift on here, is good for four inches and taller. But if you've got a truck in stock configuration or you've just got a lift and leveling kit on the front end, you can use this one right here, and it'll take care of those situations as well. So the first thing we need to do is get the track bar out of the way. I'm going to hit this side with the electric impact, and I'm going to leave a few threads at the bottom so when we pop this loose, it won't come down and hit the floor.
What I want to show you guys is a front hub assembly on the new Super Duty trucks. Now this one's been slightly modified, but it'll work for the demonstration I want to show you. Now this is a unibearing assembly, and in its factory configuration, it's, it's not a bad way to go, but the problem is when you start upgrading your trucks and going something big like this with lift kits and big aftermarket tires where they got a big offset, this becomes a problem. First of all, the unibearing is unserviceable. Once it goes, it goes. There's nothing you can do for it, so you pretty much have to junk it and get a new one. The reason why you have problems is, well, right now in factory configuration, the wheel butts up against this flange. The aftermarket wheels get farther and farther offset, so what you're doing is you're putting the weight and the load farther away, which is acting like a big lever, which is really twisting and tearing apart this, this unibearing. So, if you've got a big truck like this with big tires and stuff, you really need to upgrade to a traditional style spindle mount like in the old Ford trucks. Now, first of all, that spindle mount is much stronger, can handle much more load than this. The other thing is completely rebuildable. You can repack the bearings, you can service the whole thing. So, in a nutshell, you got with a big truck like this with big offset tires, you need to upgrade this. So what's in your bed? Obviously, you take a look at our truck and you see we've got a load of rocks that we're going to be moving around out here today, and what we're doing is putting the Duplicolor bed armor to the test. We know that you guys are throwing tools and any number of things in the back of your truck, and you want the liner that's going to hold up and protect the bed of the truck, and that's what it's all about. You know, you talk about the Duplicolor bed armor, it is impact, chemical, and UV resistant. It's also made with Kevlar, so you know it's tough, and it's ridiculously easy to install. Everything that you need is right here in this little kit, because you want something like this to be as easy easy to do as possible. Now let's get in here and take a look at some of the stuff. This is what's going on and you pour this down. It's really neat to look at. That's what's going to go in the bed of the truck and protect it. Now you can't see the Kevlar in there, but it's in there and it's a bunch of little fibers that actually hold everything together and that's going to keep it from cracking or peeling. It's just going to keep it good and tough. We actually dumped a bunch of rocks in here already. I got the loader set. We're going to dump some more rocks in this thing, rinse this out and see how it holds up because I know you guys are wondering, does it really work? Well, we're going to find out. So this job is done, we got the rocks out of here, got it all cleaned up, and you can see how well the bed armor held up. Now keep in mind, this is an extreme example. If you're going to do this with your bed armor kit, make sure you let it cure for at least 24 hours. Now this is one of many tests that we're going to be putting the bed armor through. I mentioned the fact that it's made with Kevlar so you know it's tough. What we wanted to do today was really test the impact resistance and the durability of the product. And I've got to tell you, it passed this test with flying colors. If you'd like some more information about bed armor, there's demonstration videos, or where you can buy the product, be sure to check out Duplicolor's website. One way to put the end of those rattling windows in your truck is by installing a window channel kit. Over time, the rubber on the window channel will wear out, causing weather elements to get inside. The anti-rattle kit seals to the door glass as the window slides up and down, and is very easy to replace. Simply align the clips and press it into the door. The new kit will tighten up your window track and reduce road noise, vibration, and keep the elements out. The kit is available for most domestic trucks. And while you have the door panel off, it's a good time to replace that window regulator too. This tip is brought to you by LMC Truck. With over 30,000 truck parts in stock, you can get the right part at the right price right now. Welcome back to Truck U. The guys at Deltran are constantly reinventing the battery tender and making them even better. Now this is the next step in the evolution. It's the waterproof Power Tender Plus. Yeah, man, like all the battery tenders, this has got those same key features where it's spark proof and it's got reverse polarity protection. But this one also goes to the next level with it being waterproof and shock and vibration resistant. Also comes with a set of fused ring terminals which can be mounted up inside your vehicle. Let's say your boat, you can keep this thing mounted in place. It's easily detachable. When you get a dock, you plug it in, you know your battery's gonna stay charge. Yeah, the name of the game with all of the battery tenders is to significantly extend the battery life. So you spend a little bit of money on one of these and you save a lot of money in the long run because your batteries last longer. And that, again, is what it's all about with all of the battery tender products from Deltran.
If you're working on a Chevy truck, which we know a lot of you guys are, this is where you need to look. It's the classic parts catalogs for Chevy trucks from Classic Parts of America. Now, these catalogs are broken down for years from 1947 going all the way up to the new one, which takes you from 1988 to 98. Now, there's six catalogs for all of them. They're free, and you know what? They're great because the inside, all the pictures are color. They've got obscure parts like little screws to your common things like radios and dashes and everything else you need. And this company's been around for 26 years. When you get the product, it's going to fit your application. And they're located conveniently in the Midwest, so if you need that part and you need it quick, they can generally get it to you in about one to three days. It's the Classic Parts Catalogs for Chevy Trucks from Classic Parts of America. For more information on anything you've seen on today's show, check out speedtv.com or visit our website at truckutv.com. Yeah, this is going to handle a lot better for a sure. A lot better. Hey, welcome back to Truck U. So what we're doing right now is getting ready to finish up this Super Shaker Eliminator kit from WC Motorsports and Off-Road. And the guy that owns this truck, our buddy, is going to be a lot more confident driving down the road because he's going to get rid of the bump steer and the death wobble. I think he's even going to enjoy pulling trailers now, so that's a very good thing. First thing we have to do is make a few more adjustments so that we can get ready to lay this new track bar in. Now, with the old track bar out of the way, the next step for us is to go ahead and remove this bolt. What we'll do is cut it off with a cutoff wheel. With that bolt out of the way, we'll use our ball joint removal tool to remove this ball joint. Now, with the ball joint gone, it's time to place in our mounting bracket here for our new track bar. With the new mounting point installed, use this Allen bolt and plate washer to clamp it down. Once that's all done on this side, we can come back over here to this existing bracket and we need to bore out this hole to 7 eighths of an inch. That's going to compensate for this bigger bolt that's going to go through there because that is what the heim joint is going to be riding on. And keep in mind, that's how we're getting rid of all this because those bushings are a thing of the past. Now we're ready to put the new track bar in place. With our bracket drilled out to 7 eighths, our new bolt will slide into place, but take your time when you align the shims. One goes on each side of the heim joint. A few turns of the track bar and the other side slides right in. Now with the vehicle on level ground, you can adjust the track bar to center the wheels. The final step now is to go and take this truck down to the alignment shop with your instructions to have it aligned to the new specifications. That way you're ready, the job is done, and you're rolling down the road a lot more comfortably and a lot more confidently as well. It's been a good day. We've gotten a lot of things done, and it's like we said earlier. We're not picking on Ford. We're just dealing with some of the issues that we know about, and hopefully we've helped one or two of you along the way. That's all the time we've got this week for Truck U. We'll catch you next time.